Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Holy FaceTime. Uh, this morning is July 9th, and I wanted to read to you um, another uh, writing from this great book of uh, The Woman in Orbit. And um, unfortunately, I think this book is sold out and can still you can still obtain um, a, an electronic copy uh, through the Marian Devotional Movement or if you visit... Um, uh, rosarybridge.com and go to their shop and just do a search for Woman in Orbit. Uh, once again, that's rosarybridge.com. And uh, they're great friends of ours. And uh, this book is such a, uh, a wonderful um, treasure of uh, teachings on Our Lady. And so <clears throat> let us begin this day on our, our, as a, Our Lady of Atonement. The title of Our Lady of Atonement was given to Mary in 1901 by Father Paul James Francis, S.A., founder of the Society of Atonement, which, while still outside the church, and it recalls his own simple, strong devotion to the Mother of God. The singular character of the name is emphasized by the red mantle which Our Lady wears in honor of the precious blood, and by the infant Christ supported in her arms. The infant bears a cross as a sign of his victory on the altar of the cross. Father Paul, together with Mother Lorana, Mary Francis, S.A., the two founders of the Society of Atonement, Graymore, New York, received the grace to enter the church on October 30th, 1909, precisely because of their devotion to the Mother of God, and with their entrance into Peter's fold, they brought their special devotion to the Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Atonement, under the blessings of the popes and the indulgences of the Church. Devotion is spread ever more widely in various parts of the Catholic world, particularly by the Pauline, Paulist Fathers. According to Father Paul, Our Lady of Atonement includes two ideas, the cross and unity. He liked to say that the garments of Our Blessed Mother were stained with the blood of Jesus when she stood on Calvary, and when she held him in her arms after death. He fully approved of the words of the hymn, Remind us by the mantle, all steeped in chrism red, the precious blood of Jesus to save men's soul was shed. But there was another ex explanation he gave for Our Lady of Atonement. He said that the name means unity, for it may be divided into and, to re and read as at one meant. And the mother of God is surely the great means of uniting men with God. She constantly prays for the union of all men and in the one church established by her beloved son. With the assurance <clears throat> of an apostolic soul, Father Paul said, the title atonement must appeal to Mary in a special way. We have every reason to believe that the Blessed Virgin especially loves this title that links her name with that of Jesus in the glorious work of atonement wrought upon the cross. Atonement speaks of reconciliation, pardon, peace, and of the fulfillment of prayer. First breathed by her divine Son, and so often repeated by herself that Christian believers may be one. Our Lady is the guardian of the Mother and the Mother of Unity, she not only preserves the faithful in being un united to Christ and with each other, but she prays for all separated from her Son. She longs to bring all schismatics, Protestants, Jewish people, and even atheists and communists into the fold of Christ. She is the special patroness of Christian unity, and her mother's heart embraces the world. Pope John XXIII aroused the interest of people all over the world in unity. He has made Our Lady of the Advocate in a great enterprise. The, in the Council of 1962 and 63, he has said, Ours is a Marian age, and it becomes more evident from day to day that the way for men to return to God is assured by Mary. Mary is the basis for men to return to God. Mary is the basis of our confidence, the guarantee of our security, the foundation of our hope. The title of Our Lady Atonement was approved by the Church in 1948 with a special Mass and office. Father Paul claimed Mary wished to keep this title for the later ages of the Church to furnish great joy to her children. 
She considered it an especially precious title. The way of unity is our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of at one meant. And I'm just, you know, thinking about this, and and it reminds me so much of the Holy Face devotion and the writings of Sister Marie de St. Pierre, because in, in the various prayers that she wrote, um, and through the revelations from, from Christ, everything was through the hands of Mary. Um, that our Lord specifically said that this devotion was given to Mary uh, to make sure that it would, you know, come to uh, come to being, you know. And um, in the various prayers, again, she says, you know, um, uh, that, um, you know, she, through the Divine Mother, through her hands, um, in 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 union with. Uh, Our Lady, you know, she she repeats these phrases often in a lot of the prayers, and um, so everything that, like like Father Paul said, Our Lady was she was active in uh, atonement, and in reparation can be an, another word for atonement, and so that's <clears throat> she played an active role in repairing the damage that sin has caused in the world. And continuing in that role, always uh, united with us, and so our prayers through Mary are always more efficacious uh, because she purifies them. Because her her heart and her mind, and her body and her soul were purified by our Lord in the instant, whenever you know, uh, in the through the incarnation of our Christ, you know, uh, through Jesus. Um, so these. What I wanted to do, I guess, was just do um, maybe a simple prayer to Our Lady uh, in recognition of her honor and her glorious reparation that we pray. So there's um, exercise in honor of Our Lady of the Seven Duelers uh, from the Arch Confraternity Manual. And I can post this prayer as well. And uh, so I'll read from it now. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I, deeply compassionate, O Mary, Mother of Sorrows, the affliction suffered by the tender heart on hearing the prophecy of the old man Simeon. Dearest Mother, by the greatly afflicted heart, obtain for us the virtue of humility and the grace of the fear of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I, deeply compassionate, O Mary, Mother of Sorrows, the anguish suffered by the most sensitive heart during the flight and the sojourn in Egypt. Dearest Mother, by the afflicted heart, obtain for us the virtue of generosity and of liberality, above all towards the poor and the gift of piety. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I, deeply compassionate, O Mary, Mother of Sorrows, the cruel grief felt by thy tender heart at the loss of their dear son, dearest mother, by the holy heart, so keenly tried, obtain for us the virtue of chastity and the gift of knowledge. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I, deeply compassionate, O Mary, Mother of Sorrows, the consternation which by thy maternal heart experienced when thou didst meet Jesus bearing his cross. Dearest Mother, by the sensitive heart, so steeped in bitterness, obtain for us the virtue of patience and the gift of fortitude. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I, deeply compassionate, O Mary, Mother of Sorrows, the martyrdom endured by the courageous heart at witnessing Jesus in his agony. Dearest Mother, by thy heart, so cruelly martyred, obtain for us the virtue of temperance and the gift of good counsel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
I, deeply compassionate, O Mary, mother of sorrows, the wound received by the tender heart when the side of Jesus was opened, and the heart pierced by the lance, dearest mother, by the heart of so sorrowful, fully transpierced, obtain for us the virtue of fraternal charity and the gift of understanding. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I, deeply compassionate, O Mary, Mother of sorrows, the lively anguish, anguish with, with which the tender heart was torn at the burial of Jesus, dearest Mother, by thy sacred heart, so cruelly overwhelmed by sorrow, obtain for us the virtue of diligence and the gift of wisdom. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O most sorrowful virgin, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of Holy Face Time. And until next time, God bless you all. Blessed be his holy face. Blessed be the adorable name of God. Thank you all. God bless.